Who likes joy? Hands up, please. Who likes depression? <laughs> hey, you may be okay with it, but like, who likes it? Which, in which case, you should sit it. Why do you think that is? You think that's random? You think anything is random? Everything's intelligent. So why is it that sometimes you feel joy, and sometimes you feel whatever the other side of joy is? Fear or depression? Sometimes you feel free. Sometimes you feel not free. Cage, hopeless, no way to go, depressed, nothing means anything anyway. Whatever. Why do some things in life, some activities, some people, some thoughts, some emotions, why do some of these bring you in a state of ecstasy? And why do some of these bring you in a state of depression, deprived of joy, deprived of feeling connected? There is a reason. It's not random. And I know we like to dismiss it because it's too complicated to wrap our minds around. And it simply takes some time to start to understand this. It takes some time to understand what I'm about to speak about. So you may find some reluctance in yourself, which is fine. You can either go or sit in silence or do something for yourself or whatever works for you. Or you can save it for another time. <coughs> when you do realize that there is a benefit to being happy, whether that's spiritually accurate or not, whether that's non-dually accurate or not, you realize that at some point, again, after the seeking has come and gone, there is a value to happiness. There is a real value to joy. Now, we all know, even our scientists, not that they're all the way on the bottom, but still, <laughs> even our scientists, even our Newtonian scientists, I think, realize that everything in the universe works in terms of vibrations, frequencies, rates of cycles, or in short, just vibration or frequency. Everything. Everything has a particular frequency. The wall over there has a particular frequency, which is why it appears as it does, which is why it has the color that it does, da, 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 everything. All the properties of a particular expression of consciousness, or as scientists like to call it, matter, is because of frequency. This goes for everything. So there is no distinction between outside and inside. So this applies to your mind as well as your emotional being. Now the representation of a low frequency as we know it would be depression. And you can actually feel it. Even if it's not yourself, you can feel it if you're around people. I can feel it if I'm around people. If there's a, and I don't mind it. It's fine. It's beautiful. And I love it too. So don't feel like you have to manage yourself around me ever. But when you're sitting in a room with somebody that's like really depressed or really angry or whatever it is, you all can feel the energetic effects that has on your whatever, your feel of presence in this physical focus. You can feel it. It's a, it's a low frequency distortion. It's like you're almost standing in front of a bass a speaker, you know, in those house parties they have. <laughs> but not like a soothing ohm, more like a, almost like radiation. And you feel they're poisoning their body doing so as well. It's just a low frequency energy. It's just out of alignment. Now when somebody is really joyous, especially when they're joyous and they're letting it be at the same time, but not disengaging from it, calling it anything, accepting and raising the joy, the bliss, the happiness, the passion, but at the same time, letting it be, so that if it changes into something else, that's too, that's good too. That's real joy. The real joy of being able to experience or see joy, or shall we say holistic positivity, even in those circumstances that we've been taught to label negative. That's real joy. When you feel that around somebody, you feel healed. You're healing. Ah, it feels aligned. And this works for yourself internally as well. So the value of joy or the purpose of joy, it's almost like that's the only little thing that's been given to us in the physical focus or in the physical embodiment to let us know if we're doing something in alignment or out of alignment. 
That's its value. It's your only only compass here. You don't know why, you don't know what, you don't know how. All you know is what you're experiencing right now. And what you're experiencing right now can either resonate, and if it resonates, we could call that an increase in frequency. It's scientific. It's not really woo-woo, unless you want to call it woo-woo. Mm -hmm. To me, it's not woo-woo. The language of it is a bit woo-woo, but I haven't figured out a better way to describe it yet. But the experience I'm conveying is not woo-woo. It's very practical. It's very real. It has very real benefits to your life and those around you and your purpose here. It's more purposeful to me at this point than sitting around and pretending enlightenment is something naked. That has its value too. But if that's drawn out for too long, it starts to become non-resident. Those who seek for many, many years are doing something wrong. Sorry to say that. You're doing something wrong to yourself. You're not doing something wrong that you should be doing right, but you're not listening to yourself. You're not giving yourself enough credit. You're not listening to your inner compass. You're listening to teachers. So if I ever become such an obstacle, please, by all means, drop me. Take only what resonates for you. It's very important. I would never want to be an impediment or an example with which you can compare yourself in a negative way. If I form any sort of impediment within your being, in your mind, then don't show up anymore or drop me out of your mind or find an acceptance for it or whatever works. But don't continue along that path. Don't think that I have the truth. You have the truth. There is no one truth. There is moment-by-moment moment truth, which is tuned into by listening to what brings you happiness, awe, excitement. If you listen to that, then that means that that's the absolute truth in that moment. If that means to light up a cigarette, that means lighting up a cigarette is the absolute truth of the entire universe within you in that moment. Nothing any of the teachers ever said or declared is more truthful in that moment than if you're truly, genuinely, holistically excited about lighting a cigarette. Your only truth is yourself, your inner compass. That's more important than anything I've ever said, say or will say. So if ever I change my mind on this subject, and I say, no, I do have the truth, and you should listen to what I say, and please take my words as I say them now, more to heart than what I'll say then. I don't anticipate that will happen. So again, the misperceived notion of enlightenment Enlightenment equals listening to your heart, listening to your joy, listening to your bliss. <clears throat> the enlightenment you seek, maybe the enlightenment you in particular seek, maybe a very like limited spectrum of consciousness, which may only be called the non-dual states of consciousness. If enlightenment to you is only that at this moment, is only be still and know I'm God, or whatever it is, if only that to you is God and holy and sacred and absolute truth, by all means. However, realize that those states you desire come quicker to you if you listen to your bliss than if you listen to the reasoning of how to get there. If you listen to other teachers, or me, other teachers being everyone, every teacher, outside of yourself, there are no teachers outside of yourself, you ask for that reflection to learn something. Sometimes it is to directly learn whatever they're instructing, but oftentimes it is actually to learn more about yourself, to learn more about your own freedom and confidence in the face of their presence and what it triggers for you. That's usually way more important of a teaching than the actual instructions. Now, sometimes you come along a teacher and the instructions just do the job for you, and that's why you're meant to be there. But often, there's an intense emotional connection to your idea of that teacher, right? Maybe not for you, but for many people. That in itself is the teacher. What comes up for you in relationship to the teaching and the teacher. And if you're not listening to what resonates for you, if you're not listening to what excites you, what holistically excites you, holistically meaning not as a means to avoid negativity or to sugarcoat the nasty stuff, but holistically exciting. <sighs> yes, that feels right. It feels good. It resonates which brings you into higher frequency states of consciousness, which in turn will give you way more immediate access to the states that you idolize so much, 
in, for example, non-duality or a beta or whatever. So you're actually keeping that away from you by despising the means that I'm now disclosing. You prefer, or you're taught to prefer, to disprove of yourself, to deprive yourself of that joy because it's woo, -woo. It's not describing the non-dual state immediately. And yet, it's the quickest means to get there. <clears throat> so that's the irony. Describing the non-dual state and seeking for it keeps it away for a very long time, as long as you believe you're not worthy of it. If you start to follow your bliss, those beliefs cannot stand the light of your excitement. They cannot stand the light of the purity of the connection you feel when you're in excitement, when you're in resonance with yourself, when you're in joy, when you're in love. All those qualities, all those states of being become immediately accessible through no other means than following the only compass that you have here. So if you're following your intellect when it comes to your spiritual nature, then you're doing something wrong to yourself. You're doing yourself some harm. Which too is beautiful and too sometimes happens for many, many decades. So that the experience of it, the confidence that comes from moving away from that, or changing the way you do things, can be so profound that you'll never be full again. So even suffering and even doing yourself harm has a purpose and therefore is holistically positive. Everything serves the light, especially the dark. That being said, would you want to prolong it consciously if you're aware of this process? Would you want to prolong your state of seeking or darkness, of depriving yourself of all the things you want. Because ironically, if you embody the things that I'm now speaking to, which may again not sound correct in some of your ears, if you embody that, it is my guarantee you will find what you are looking for through the self-deprivation path. But you'll find it through self-joy. And way quicker than through the self-deprivation path. So it has real meaning, it has real purpose. And it is something I think you should all listen to, even though it sounds woo-woo. Or maybe not, maybe you like the mm -hmm. fluffy stuff. But it's not fluffy stuff, that's my point. I have no means at this point to make it sound non-fluffy without it becoming a self-deprivational path. So I'll just make it sound fluffy and hope you can see through that. Everything vibrates, everything has frequencies. There is no world apart from consciousness. 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 All that you see is simply a frequency of consciousness. The physical focus being one of the densest, one of the most crystallized. But it is still a frequency of consciousness. It's not a world in and of itself. It does not exist apart from consciousness. Now, consciousness is not something that hangs around your brain. It's not something that's produced by your brain. So when I say the whole world is within consciousness, I don't mean the whole world exists within your brain. Although to a certain extent, from a physical perspective, even that is true. Because you're not ever perceiving objectively. You're only perceiving whatever neurons, whatever, whatever electricity fires up in your brain. That's what you're perceiving. You're not perceiving a microphone. You're seeing color because of electricity in your brain. You're feeling sensations because of electricity in your brain. So even from a physical standpoint, the brain is a representation of what I'm speaking about from a more spiritual perspective. There is no world outside of consciousness. Where does that shift your allegiance to? Can you feel that shift when I keep repeating it? There is no world outside of consciousness. Does it not relax something? This projection of an outside world, even filled with teachers and teachings and spirituality, even that world does not exist outside of consciousness. There is no world apart from consciousness. All that's ever happening to you, for you, through you, by you, is that your consciousness is tuning into a particular level of consciousness. You're focusing yourself into a particular frequency of consciousness. That may be what you're hearing in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> Which is actually quite soothing. For the purpose of this representation, can be a low frequency, which doesn't mean that being relaxed is low frequency or not seeing entities is low frequency or any of that. Low frequency simply means out of alignment. What feels out of alignment is low frequency. Does that make sense? What feels poisoning to your system is a signal that you're out of alignment with what makes sense to your being. And what gets you to the things that your being truly desires in the quickest, most effortless, joyful way 
Now again, make no mistake, you all desire. And thank God that doesn't stop, because it's beautiful. Once you get the hang of what I'm saying here. Anything influences your frequency, okay? So, or your, instead of frequency, you could say state of consciousness or state of being, frequency of consciousness, whatever resonates and sounds the least woo-woo. Or if you like woo-woo, whatever sounds the most woo-woo. <laughs> but if you really like, I really like root beer. Good root beer. Not all root beer, but good. So sometimes, when I'm watching a movie or something, or I just, I'm at home, and I'm craving a root beer, there's such ecstasy there, in like going to the fridge and getting that root beer. <laughs> so in that instance, that experience of opening the root beer and drinking, oh, God, it's so good. That experience increases my state of being, okay? So every, what I'm saying is that everything around you, in that sense, everything within the illusion of consciousness has an impact on the frequency of your mental, emotional, physical being, and even on your state of being, if you let it. I let it in those instances. I agree. Yes, this is beautiful. This is, I'm in love with this movie. <clears throat> However, what increases your independence from what happens, what allows your frequency to become more and more independent from these things, is if you learn to deliberately focus your consciousness wherever you want to, whatever frequency you want to. Now this could be equated to what I've talked about when I use imagination. When you're using imagination, not just to daydream in a subconscious way, but in a very conscious, deliberate way, when you utilize imagination, for example, who of you would like to experience a state of doubtlessness? Hands please. Anybody? Doubtlessness? Imagine. Just close your eyes for now. If you're comfortable with that. Relax, take a few deep breaths for yourself. Relax your body, relax your thoughts. Just come into, in a sense, come into your body. Come into your sense of being present here. Your sense of I am. Now imagine, imagine a light being. Okay? What I mean by that in this imagination, imagine a being that has the shape of a human being, but all you see is light. Blue, whitish light, or whatever resonates for you. All that's emitting from them is light. Just imagine that you meet such a being. If it makes it more impactful, you can imagine you're on the moon or somewhere spacey. Doesn't matter, have fun. The point being, imagine that this being, this perfect light being, approaches your vicinity. You see it in the distance, walking on the surface of whatever planet you're on. And it's sort of floating toward you, very peacefully. No disturbances whatsoever sensed in that being. It's 200 feet away. It's coming closer. And you're just marveling at what you're seeing. It's 100 feet away. The light is becoming brighter. It's becoming more intense. And you can feel it more. It's becoming more physical. As if the warm, the perfect warm of the sun is approaching you in humanoid form. 50 feet away. 10 feet away, 4 feet away. Now, his being is somewhat taller than yourself, say 7 feet, 6, 7 feet. And it's pure light. You can't even see facial features, because it's just pure light. You can't see skin, muscles, none of that. You can see the outline of a humanoid form, but it's made up of pure light. Now what you sense from this being, imagine that you sense from this being, Complete and utter doubtlessness. There is not a single doubt in this being's consciousness. In this sense, this being is an immediate extension of Source itself. It knows all there is to know. It has no seeking left whatsoever. It knows everything at all times, in all universes, in all times, all dimensions. It knows. It contains all of that. And yet what you experience is perfect peace complete and utter, shining, overwhelming doubtlessness. See how this light overtakes your body until all you can see is white. You're bathed in this whiteness of complete doubtlessness. Experience. What is that light's experience? What is that being's experience like? What would it be like to experience in this light that I'm being bathed in right now? Complete and utter doubtlessness. Imagine what that would feel like. Not a doubt in your mind anywhere. Not even thinking about whether there is a doubt or not. 
You're so doubtless that you don't even consider any of these things. You're so beyond it. Complete doubtlessness. Complete confidence. The humblest of confidence is also just experience that light and its perfection, its doubtlessness. Again, what would it be like to experience from this being's perspective, to be able to freely roam the universe in whatever form, shape, or way you like? Beyond the speed of light, you can be instantaneously wherever, in as many forms as you want to, but there is always within complete doubtlessness. Everything is possible. You're the immediate extension of Source. What would it be like to experience that from within? To be that being, that light being? And what would it be like to experience that right now, right here, in physical focus? To remember within your heart, within your state of being, that doubtlessness as your own. You are an extension, an immediate extension of sorts. No distortions, pure confidence, pure faith, pure knowledge, pure doubtlessness. And can you see how simply imagining such a frequency of consciousness actually triggers it within you? You're actually becoming the state you're imagining. Whatever you focus your consciousness on, you become the frequency of. Now, if something would happen that would be perceived by your mind as negative in a circumstance, like a phone going off, maybe, disturbing your imagination, how could you still focus, deliberately focus your consciousness on a spectrum of consciousness, on a level of consciousness, on a frequency, an area of the space that you are that is not disturbed by that, that actually sees the holistically positive nature of your present circumstance? I wish for you all to be this joy at all times, to be able to realize, well, you are able to realize it, but to realize that you always have a choice where you focus your consciousness. You don't always have a choice, at least not personally, exactly what circumstance comes into your consciousness. That does not mean that you don't have a choice where you focus your consciousness on, in what state of being you focus your consciousness on. You may have a thousand negative thoughts about your present circumstance, but it's still up to you to focus on those thousand negative thoughts or to focus your attention, to focus your consciousness into, for example, the space of non-duality or into simply a space of being that's not affected by that. You can still focus your consciousness on the sense of doubtlessness, on the memory or the imagination of that light being that really is your higher self. It is yourself. It's not an external being. You always have a choice, regardless of what comes up in your mental body, your emotional body, or to your physical body. Whatever appears to you, it's up to you where you focus your consciousness in. In a sense, we could say, from this beingness perspective, that's the only choice you have at this point, at this stage, in this physical embodiment. The only choice you really have is the state of being you adopt toward whatever appears not whatever appears. It's up to you what you focus on. Sincerely. Not until you realize it. It's not up to you if you don't realize it's up to you. But then it's still up to you from a higher perspective to not realize that it's up to you. You want that blindness, but now since you're all here, I assume you're ready to start to become more aware of the fact that it is up to you. It has always been up to you, unconsciously up to now. But from now onward, you'll bring more and more consciousness in the fact that you can focus your consciousness on anything you like. There's never a situation in which you cannot recognize something positive as a means to connect to your state of holistic positivity or your high frequential state of being. No matter the circumstances, you can always find something positive. One that I like to use that seems to apply to pretty much every situation is to simply shift your consciousness to the level of molecules or atoms. Something can be going haywire all around you. People and children can be raped all around you. Forgive the language here. But that could happen, potentially. You could be in a war torn area where you see people being decapitated. And the molecules have an entirely different experience. The atoms are still dancing. People are still learning about themselves for their higher good. And this physical life is just a temporary play. So decapitating somebody's head, if that's what's happening between two beings, 
you can also see from the perspective that they actually agreed to have that experience for the purpose of well-being. Not all is as it seems. In fact, everything is not as it seems. It all depends on your perspective. Now, what's the purpose? Not of sugarcoating, not of avoiding, but what's the purpose of seeing, of focusing your consciousness into the positive, the holistically positive, in any circumstance? Is that it keeps you in a state of where you're able to be of most benefit to yourself and everybody else. Seeing it in a negative way will only reinforce the situation in that way through you. Responding with fear and horror and judgment is not going to help anybody. You're doing the very thing that you're witnessing. You're making a judgment. Decapitating somebody's head is not inherently bad. I won't recommend doing it for fun, but it's not inherently bad. The moment you judge it as inherently bad, you're focusing your consciousness into that energy, into that frequency of judgment, into the frequency of this is wrong. And how do you feel? You feel wrong. And so your help or activism or whatever it is may come from that state, which will only perpetuate and fuel what you see. And what you see is not inherently wrong. What you see is judged inherently wrong. What you see is your own judgments. So what you're giving to the world in that circumstance is your own judgment. And your judgment is of a low-frequency nature. So what you'll reinforce is of a low-frequency nature. The only way you can be of service in such circumstances is to have at least some part of your consciousness be rooted in some type of positivity. Some type of, not positivity and, oh, everything is fine, but positivity, again, holistic positivity. Like in knowing that everything is happening for the purpose of a higher good. Or whatever perspective you wish to focus on in that moment that anchors at least a part of your energy. I'm not assuming that we're all able, or that even I'm able to, stay completely holistically positive in such circumstances. Nevertheless, if you have a large amount of your being, of your consciousness, projected into something holistically positive, something connected to faith, to unity, to beingness, or even just positivity, it has a similar effect, then you're able to help from that place. Then you're able to act. But let's assume that most of us do not experience these things on a daily basis, those extreme, acute, physical torture and torment situations. Let's bring this down for a moment to something more everyday business for all of us. Can anybody come up with a horrible situation that's pretty everyday? doesn't have to be personal. It can be something you see on the news every day. But whatever. Homelessness. There's one perspective that would say, that would immediately assume and express the energy of homelessness is bad. Homelessness is sad for those people. Homelessness is terrible. We need to do something about it. That would be the overall, I would say, the conditioned general response that we have in common, right? Like you feel for them. Why do you not feel for the rich guy in the palace? Is he better off? You don't know. Is he better off? You don't know. A homeless guy can be the happiest person alive. Thing, my point being is that you can adopt so many different perspectives to the same situation that once you practice this in real life, you start to see that there is no one way something is. There is no one truth. There is no objective reality happening there. It's all a show. It's all a show in consciousness attracted into our lives and agreed to experience in the way that it occurs so that it can show you your own thoughts. It can show you your own responses. It can show you where you can stop focusing on the things you don't prefer and focus your consciousness in the states and frequencies you enjoy and that feel resonant and in alignment with your being, that feel holistically true for you. When you do that, all the things that you desire through all the self-deprivational paths are going to be yours without the self-deprivation and way quicker. You're going to benefit yourself, you're going to be empowered, no longer be a victim of your circumstances, believing that there's a world outside of consciousness, you'll see that all is simply a choice, a particular scene of consciousness that you're choosing to experience. And it's all coming, the scenes are determined partly by whatever agreements you've made as a theme to explore in this physical embodiment, but also, to a large extent, the little things that keep showing up between those big sort of themes that you're exploring 
are determined by your state of being, by where you focus your consciousness in. So the themes that you have sort of agreed to explore for yourself for a particular purpose are there no matter what you do. How enjoyable that ride's going to be, how beneficial and how quick and how effective that's going to happen for you. If you do it so effectively, then you can complete a theme within this physical embodiment within a ridiculous amount of time. Sometimes what's set out for you to learn in a lifetime, you can learn in a split second, which allows your learning experience to also reflect that change. In a sense, the higher self then say, okay, well, you got some time left here. Let's induce some more themes for you to explore that are of a higher vibration, that are of a higher frequency. And so you learn more within the extent of one physical embodiment. And it doesn't have to be as long, it doesn't have to be as nasty, it doesn't have to be a struggle. Your state of being, your attitude, where you focus your consciousness on is entirely, at all times, up to you. It's even up to you to say and believe that it's not up to you. Because it's all up to God. That's the attitude, that's the frequency you're focusing in. You can also choose to try a different one. If it doesn't work for you, if it works for you and it resonates and it brings you ecstasy, it brings you a sense of yes, ah, by all means continue to give it all away to God. Nevertheless, realize that there is no God apart from consciousness. You're not actually giving it away. You're only pretending to give something away. There's not even a something to give away. It's all pretense. But if it works, it's beautiful. But you can even continue doing that while seeing that it's not really true. And you can appreciate the resonance that it creates. I can see that the root beer is not containing happiness. It's not happiness in a bottle. I'm giving it that meaning. I see that. I see the game. I see the pretense. But it's all a play of consciousness. And I see that there is no outside of consciousness. And so that becomes an enjoyable, optional experience. And you can focus yourself like that, holistically positive, in any circumstance. This may take some time, this may take some practice, it may take lifting yourself out of the mud, finding some motivation to transcend your shit for a moment. It may take that again and again to get the hang of it, because we're conditioned to believe we're out of control. First, we're conditioned to believe we're in control, which is why we need the conditionment that we're not in control. And then you see that you've always been in control. You've always been the dictator, not the personal you. Okay. But there is a communication happening there. Even you, from a physical point of view, have to some extent an influence on what's happening to you and how it's happening to you. When you're low frequency, meaning when you're perpetuating the thoughts, emotions, and physical activities that do not resonate for you you'll attract more of that non-resonance to yourself in the form of whatever, physical ailments or circumstantial obstacles all the time, or similar patterns repeating themselves or just feeling shit every day or being depressed. All of these are not a signal to necessarily allow it unless you can truly, feel, truly, truly, truly allow it. Like, let the light shine in. If you can be totally happy with your depression, then you've got the hang of what it means to allow things. If not, by all means, change something in your mental, emotional, or physical body. Don't pretend to accept something that generally, genuinely does not resonate for you. You can't accept the things that don't resonate for you. They're already accepted. But as a being, your purpose is not necessarily to agree with these things. They're there to show you what is truly desired from a higher perspective, from a more holistic perspective. And what is not desired? You are ought to listen to that if this message resonates for you. If you want to be happy and realize all the things that you feel this inner urge to realize, there is a need to start communicating with yourself in this way. To realize that it's up to you how you focus yourself in any moment, regardless of circumstances, regardless even of thoughts, emotions, and physical circumstances. Or conditions. It's still up to you how you label these things. It's still up to you with what frequency, with what energy you approach these things. Can you see that? Something can happen right now, and it, well, everything continuously happens, but something specific that stands out could happen right now. I could slap myself in the face, and it has a different response in each of you. 
It's not an inherently da 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 experience. You say it's a da 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 experience, but that's just a label. Completely optional. The label creates how you feel about it. And how you feel about it reinforces a particular state on all your bodies that doesn't resonate, or does. And when you come into resonance with your being, all things will align for you. Doesn't mean there's no challenges. Doesn't mean you're never going to suffer again. Doesn't mean you're never going to disagree again. Simply means things start smoothing themselves out. You start flowing. You start gaining the insights that you've always longed for, but kept away from yourself out of this need to be a non-person or whatever the need is, whatever your self-deprivational thoughts are and beliefs are. But if you really truly see that it's up to you where you focus your consciousness, where you focus your attention, then you're free. You become more and more independent from the things. If I describe that initial circumstance with the root beard like, ah, oh, fulfilling me, if I would not have the experience of the natural acceptance of all things, of this freedom thing, beyondness, whatever. And if I did not have, maybe more importantly, if I did not have the realization that nothing exists outside of consciousness and it's up to me where, in what spectrum, in what dimension, what level, what frequency, what particular area of consciousness I focus my consciousness into, I would probably be a slave to that root beer. I would be a victim to my circumstances because that would increase my frequency, because I labeled it pleasurable, and something else would decrease my frequency because I label it unpleasurable. Can you have an holistic or time back? Can you have an holistic approach toward every situation and see that you're free to call it whatever you want to call it? Or not call it. Whatever resonates. But don't not call it anything out of a self deprivational idea that calling it something is not spiritual. <coughs> you follow? Because that, what you're choosing in that moment is not to be spiritual, you're choosing to feel inadequate, which is a low frequency vibration. You're not actually being spiritual. And your teacher may even pat you on the back saying, you're doing great, you're not labeling anything. But if it doesn't resonate, if it doesn't set you free, it's horseshit. And you should listen to what resonates, it's the only compass you have. Other people's words are no compass. They are no guidance. They're reflections which you desire and to experience, to explore your inadequacy and to set yourself free from them. So like I said, it's most of the time not the instructions given that are most important. Most important is to realize what it does to you and to become more self-aware of yourself, to set yourself free like that. Does that make sense? No more horseshit, okay? No more spiritual horseshit? No more non-dual nonsense? Unless you want to continue to deprive yourself and say that I'm the only one in the universe that doesn't deserve the bliss that everything consists of. I'm the only center in this universe that doesn't let that in. That's how unworthy I am. You want to continue to experience that isolation, that non-self-love, that self-deprivation. If that's actually what you want, by all means. But now that I've hopefully made you more aware of that tendency, is it still what you want? You want it to be blind. Now maybe we've removed some of the blindness. Is it still what you want? Do you want to be happy? Do you want to pretend you don't want to be happy because it's not spiritual? Or whatever it is. Or because society doesn't allow it, doesn't condone it, you can't be happy without a reason. There has to be a circumstance in your life that everybody collectively agrees is positive before you can call it positive. If you call it positive before everybody else calls it positive, you're going to stand out in a negative way and we're so afraid of that. Right? We're pioneers. It's your duty to be uncomfortable in society. You came here to rattle the cages. And yes, in that, there is a lot of learning for yourself. There's a lot of joyful, if you choose to see it that way, participation in relationship to your own beliefs. Sometimes it may feel like hard work. Sometimes it may feel like a breeze. But at all times, it's your honor. At all times, it's your bliss to be in the mess. It's your bliss. It's your chosen bliss. You freely chose it to be in the mess. 
You saw the mud. You knew exactly what was ahead of you. And you chose to dive in. <laughs> You're my heroes. You're my inspiration. So explore this throughout this life and throughout the next few weeks and days especially. Explore that moment where you call something by a certain name and see where that label comes from. And see if you can find that label in the inherent circumstance. Can you find it in the cells vibrating in that person that's being beat? That's being beaten? Can you find inherent wrongness in the atoms dancing? Can you find inherent wrongness in the air that's effortlessly surrounding that person that's being beat up? Or is it your label to call it, this is bad, this is really, really wrong, this is negative, this is so terrible, you, 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 you shouldn't do that. Does that help anyone? Is that inherently true or are you giving that to the world? The moment you judge something as terrible, even if it's not as a desire to do good, you're actually giving the terribleness to your environment. It's the moment that you believe in that judgment, that you emit the frequency of that judgment. See that moment, catch that moment before you've entered into the choice to focus yourself down that narrow tunnel of what everybody else has taught you means this. This means that, this means this, this means good, this means bad. Free yourself up from good and bad definitions and see that the definition you give something, the meaning you give to something is always, always, always up to you regardless of what happens. If you can catch that moment, if you can be in that space of free awareness, free consciousness, where you're in tune with your being and your resonance, and you see whatever doesn't resonate, you don't have to focus on it. You can never solve a problem by focusing on a problem. The irony is you need to let go of the problem so that it can solve itself. All you need to do is focus on what resonates. Include that which does not resonate, but focus on what does resonate, even in the inclusion of what does not resonate. Acceptance doesn't mean to agree with something as being your own. You don't have to adopt what does not resonate. You embrace, you include, you give your faith, your love to it. But by doing so, what you're choosing is not judgment, not fear, but you're actually choosing the love that you're giving. When you're loving and embracing and accepting a particular concept that does not resonate, you're not adopting the frequency of that concept, you're adopting the frequency of the love that you're giving it. So still there, too, you're choosing love. You're not choosing the concept, you're embracing it. And so you stay in your frequency of being naturally. And it becomes more and more natural and less and less work. You become freer and freer and freer and freer and freer and freer. Imagine freedom beyond what you can imagine. And that's only a fraction of the freedom that you experience more and more and more. The human mind, especially <coughs> the earthling's human mind, cannot conceive of happiness, ecstasy, bliss, perfection, joy, freedom, expensiveness. It cannot conceive of these things to a very true extent. So whatever you cannot imagine, imagine that and then know that even that is only a fraction. It's only a glimpse of the freedom that you are. To realize that is to more and more embody the frequency of that freedom. The freedom of choice, believe it or not, the freedom of choice. Not what appears, my hand is moving, but I choose what my frequency toward it is. I choose my state of being. I choose where I focus my consciousness. The more you realize this, the more it will be a choice, and the less you will feel like a slave. And you'll become a passionate, free, enlightened co-creator of the rest of yourself. You'll help participate yourself to free up, and to have fun, and to celebrate, and to learn with the rest of yourself, which is all that is. It's all yourself. It's your own party. Explore. It's always up to you. Let this be a motto that you can either resonate with or not, but see if the non-resonance is resistance to the idea, or if it really doesn't resonate. Because if there is resistance to the idea, it does resonate. That's the secret. If something feels like you're resisting it, it actually resonates. But you don't believe it's possible, you don't believe it's worth the effort, you don't, whatever you believe. But if you resist something, 
you feel a resistance it's because you believe there's some truth to it, which means it resonates to you. If something truly doesn't resonate with you, there's a clarity there. It's simply, that's not the frequency I prefer, and there's nothing in there for me to learn. What's in there for me to learn is to accept it from right over here, to send it love from right over here, and to choose my own state of consciousness from right over here. So let this be the motto for exploration during the next few weeks, if you will, if it resonates. It's always up to me what I call something. In other words, you'll see that is that it is synonymous to it's always up to me how I feel about something. Not what you're feeling, but how you're feeling about what you're feeling. It's up to you. How you consider it, from what perspective of consciousness you're approaching it. It's always up to me where I focus my consciousness. Now that is empowerment, not control. That is free will. But free will only comes with an increasing consciousness. You're only free to choose to the degree that you're conscious of the fact that you are choosing all the time. When I'm not aware of that, I too don't have free will. The moment I am aware of that, I have free will. It's still the free will to be blind to it, but then from a conventional perspective, it's not free will anymore, or it doesn't feel like it, doesn't appear like it. I just appear like Things are happening. The things are only happening that are the frequency that you're embodying. Stay true to what resonates, regardless of the circumstances. Start calling it joy, even if it's misery. And you'll see that it's not misery, you've called it misery. Now you're calling it joy, and voila, with enough perseverance and conviction and relaxation, it turns into joy. The very thing you've always labeled, I'm afraid of that, that's misery, I don't want that. Suddenly that becomes the frequency that you yourself resonate with. Life is that malleable. It's not set. Meanings, values, properties are not set. They're all dependent upon where you focus your consciousness, from what level you're approaching your life with. Not what it is, but where you're coming from in your vibration, in your energy, in your attitude. Thank you. Thank you.